Alright, let's talk about how to make this mask last. How's it going, Dive Buddies? It's Kyle here with another quick scuba tip. Thanks again for checking out the Dive Wagon. Today we are going to be talking about how to make your mask last, how to take care of your mask. Sometimes biting the bullet and getting your own equipment, whether it's a mask or a regulator, can seem a little bit overwhelming uh, emotionally or for your wallet maybe. And so we want to do everything we can in our power to make that equipment last. So here I've got a couple quick tips on how to make your masks last. Step one, now most likely when you bought your mask from your local dive shop, it came in some sort of container. Whether that be a good heavy sturdy uh, mask box like this, or a not so durable little mask just case that opens up and closes, or sometimes they even come in certain Ziploc bags depending on the make and model um, that you choose that best fits you. Now just keep in mind that you're buying a mask and not a mask container. At least cheap plastic containers are really only designed to get the mess from the manufacturer to the dive shop shelves and then into your hands and that's about it. You're going to want to throw those out, or ditch them, set them aside and snatch up some sort of mask bag. They are going to come in 101 different shapes and sizes from heavier duty zipper styles to velcro styles to little drawstring bags like this. They don't have to be the craziest uh, bulletproof containers, they're just to keep the mask protected while you throw it into your bag, onto your suitcase, onto the boat, etc. Check with your local dive shops. I'll link a few um, options in the description below if you want to take a look as to what I use for my masks um, and what some of my dive buddies will also use. Um, but always a good suggestion to head on down to your local dive shop and see what they've got. Step two for making your mask last a little longer. Don't spit in your mask unless you have to. What I'm getting at is I don't want you to use spit as the number one anti-fog solution that you use for your mask. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes you're on a dive site or on a boat or ready to go with snorkeling and you don't have any anti-fog solution. You thought you had it, you left it in the car, you left it at the hotel, whatever the case may be, and you've got to muster up a good spit and use that as anti-fog uh, for that particular dive. Due to years and years of spitting in your mask, have begun to build up bacteria and a little ecosystem inside the mask. I've actually seen it get to the point where it actually gets between the lens and the, the silicone preventing the seal and that's the reason why it's leaking is because you've got a little rainforest in between the lenses and there's little monkeys and little creatures living in there preventing a seal. Well maybe not, not to that extent but it's gross so don't do it uh, because people like me or your people at your local dive shop have to end up cleaning them and it just slowly shortens the length of your uh, mask life. So, don't spit in your mask. Number three, wash your mask. Doesn't seem like a complicated thing to do. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of people that don't wash their masks after using them in salt water or just using them in general. Um, they get thrown around, they get dirt in them. Same idea with kind of the bacteria between the lenses. All sorts of sand and dirt and grit can get caught and work its way eventually into the um, gap between the silicone skirt and the frame and the lens and that will ultimately lead to leakage and drips and a proper um, improper fitting mask. So wash it, soap and water, just soap is cool, it's not going to do any damage to the mask. I like to wash it after every trip, uh, before every season, at the end of every season. If I've gone to a particularly nasty place to dive, I will also wash it after that dive. Um, just to get any sort of nasty stuff that might be on my mask. And number four, and lastly, the last tip I have for making your mask last a little longer is most masks can be completely disassembled, meaning the frame and the lens and the skirt can all be taken apart into separate pieces and then cleaned individually and put back together. And now don't be confused. Yes, they need to be disassembled and cleaned every so often. No, I'm not telling you to do it. I don't want you to ever try to disassemble your mask um, and clean it that way. Unless you have been trained um, in the proper method and with the proper tools to disassemble your mask, do not touch your mask. Um, your dive shop will have the proper tools and the know-how to disassemble your mask and clean it properly for you. And there you have it guys, five quick tips that you can use to extend the life of your scuba or snorkel mask. Um, if you've got any questions about your particular mask or problems you might be having with your particular mask, leave a comment in the comment section below. We'll be happy to help you out. Or head on down to your dive shop as always and check with them and they'll be happy to answer any questions you have about your uh, specific equipment. Hey, and if you like this video, maybe consider liking it and subscribing to the Dive Wagon for more awesome quick scuba tips and other awesome dive content that we put out. 
um, all the time. Thanks again for watching. See you next time and happy diving.